Hey guys, and welcome to a new Let's Play. This one is in honor of my friend, the game's librarian, for his birthday. Um, I'm not entirely sure when this video is going to be going up. Hopefully it's going to be going up sometime around his birthday. It all depends on when Red Dead Redemption finishes. So... Castlevania Symphony of the Night, a game that for a lot of people needs no introduction. However, I am extremely new to this franchise and as to date, I have only played about halfway through this game. I've done the first half of the castle, shall we say, uh, and then I, <laughs> I started doing a lot more work. Um, things got very, very busy and I didn't get time to finish it. However, I am playing this game ahead. So hopefully we're not going to be missing too much. Castlevania, a game that was once rather legendary and sadly has kind of slipped into a little bit of obscurity uh, these days. However, there are rumors that it's going to be being brought back. Now, this is heralded as one of the best Castlevania games and while I have little interest in the games that predate this one I'm kind of open to playing some new ones just because this one is fantastic they did make some 3d ones which I do have however yeah, they're very mixed online um, I don't really know a huge amount about the Castlevania lore either apart from the fact that generally you play as a vampire hunter trying to take out Dracula so yeah <laughs> and the game is a side-scrolling 2d affair with a large sprawling open map where you can uh, find items to further your exploration which is interesting so, let's go, shall we? Let's go to the castle. Now, first things first. This music. This music is incredible. And I'm not going to lie, I've spent a lot of time with this just playing in the background whilst I'm editing videos and such. This is also going to be the first full Let's Play with my new microphone set up. So I'm hoping for more consistency in the audio, but we shall see. Let's go. We are emulating this using Duck Station. I do have this on the Series X as well. However, this version emulated on Duck Station is better. <laughs> it looks better and it plays better. There's some like input latency um, on the Xbox version that I didn't really pay too much attention to. However, when deciding to play it on this emulator, I immediately noticed it. This It just feels quicker and more responsive. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be going Titan. And um, let's journey back to 1792 and the Transylvanian countryside of Romania.
Now, we actually start the game playing as Richter Belmont. Uh, I believe this is like the ending of one of the other games. Uh, like I said, my uh, knowledge with Castlevania is not huge. We can hit a switch up here, which will drop down a little secret where we can go grab some items. These items aren't required at all. In fact, they're borderline pointless from what I can understand. But we will get back here later when we're playing the game properly. Just grab all these things for the sake of it. Now, we can't actually access our inventory or anything like that here. So, we I, I don't think we can equip any of those items. <coughs> like I say, I'm kind of new to all of this. We're going to grab up as many hearts as we can. Because, of course, we've got to go kick Dracula in the junk. Which is kind of a tall order, or at least it seems to be a tall order to start with. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your soul. <laughs> Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? How about you? Right, let's go. Let's take on the vampire lord himself. Now, there's actually a little bit of... Uh, secret stuff here. The better we actually do against the Vampire Lord, um, the higher our stats are when we start the game, which I thought was kind of interesting. Now, the first time I actually played this, I thought he was borderline impossible to defeat. Uh, but he really isn't, you know. He's quite simple in all fairness. So we're just going to flail our whip at him until he dies from it. Now, if we do get defeated and lose all of our health, one of our friends, Maria, I believe, will actually come and resurrect us. But we will, you know, lose any kind of bonuses if we do that. So the way it works is if you uh, lose a lot of damage, and the hit detection is really iffy here. If you uh, take too much damage, ooh, this is going to be iffy. No, we're fine. Um, and you use too many hearts, you will lose your uh, extra bonuses that you get. But that's okay. We're just going to keep whipping them in the face with our flail of justice. I'm not 100% sure, actually. It might be more efficient to just jump at him, in all fairness. He's only got two attacks in this form, as far as I can ascertain. And that is... Yep. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. That's why I like to use the flail. I think he's going to use his second attack now. Yep. Which is just a duck and a jump. So, it doesn't matter how long you take to do this bit. It's more dependent on how much damage you actually take and how many hearts you use. So, he's got his fire, which is easily defeated with our flail. Uh, but the two flaming orb things that he fires at us, we actually have to jump over those. Now... I'm not going to promise 100% run, but we're going to try and get as many items as we possibly can. I haven't actually decided how I'm going to do this LP yet, but we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. Videos are going to be 20 minutes long, because uh, that's just easier for my internet. And we're going to rain on his parade, quite literally with our holy water. And this is really going to ruin his day. Oh, but it can, bloody boy. Oh, but it can. It was Richter Belmont, the legendary vampire hunter who successfully, uh, who succeeded in finally ending the menace of Count Dracula, Lord of the Vampires, who had been brought back from the grave by the Dark Priest Shaft. Yes, really. 
However, one night four years later, under the glare of a full moon, Richter mysteriously vanished. With no idea of where to begin her search, Maria Reynard set out to look for him. It was then that fate intervened. Castlevania, the castle of Dracula, which is rumored to appear once every century, suddenly materialized from out of the mist as if to show her the way. Meanwhile, powerful forces were struggling for the soul of a man named Alucard, the very same Alucard who had teamed up with Trevor Belmont to battle his immortal father, Count Vlad Tepp's Dracula. Alucard, in order to purge the world of his own cursed bloodline, had submerged his vampiric powers and entered into what was supposed to be an eternal slumber. But now he is awake and aware of the evil once again at work in his homeland. The time has once again come for the forces of good and evil to engage in their ancient battle. Dracula's castle beckons for you and no man can say who will emerge victorious. Indeed! Indeed. And I love that shot there. I also love how in the cinematic intro, um, how low polygon the castle actually is. It's a wonderful little throwback to my youth, I guess. Even if this game did slip me by back in the, t back in the day. But we're rectifying that now. And here we're introduced into our hero, Alucard. And he's rather the dapper chap as well. Such a cool intro. Anyway, let's go explore. Let's deal with these wargs on the way. Just dispatching these giant wolves with one slash of our blade. Tis nothing. Of course, we can catch uh, some cash along the way. And we can also level, which is always good. Leveling is kind of kept at a decent pace in this game. You never feel like you're truly uh, underleveled for a situation. However, there are moments, uh, if you wish, you can grind. And, you know, I did that quite a bit when I was playing myself off camera. So our first task is to investigate the castle and see what we can find. See what's really going on around here. There's our first level. I can't remember off the top of my head what the actual level cap is in, is in this game. I think it's uh, pretty generous, but with the items and the levels, you do get disgustingly powerful by the end of the game. Secrets are a plenty in this accursed castle. And we're going to try and get as many of them as we can, if not all of them. Ah, Alucard. What is your business here? I've come to put an end to this. Still befriending mortals. I'll not ask you to return to our side, but I demand you cease your attack. I will not. You shall regret those words. We will meet again. What? <laughs> That's so badass. I love that scene. I will not. Not. Yep. We'll be seeing you a little bit later on, Death. Be seeing you later. Now, you can actually drop down and get a secret there, but it's kind of fiddly to do without. without um, some of our later on powers. Now, Death, being the dick that he is, has taken all of our weaponry. So, we're going to have to make do with the scraps that we find. But that's okay. We will certainly be finding some things that are going to make us fairly powerful going forwards. Now, there's a heart container there that we cannot get just yet. We literally start this game stripped of just about everything. There's a red rust there, which is another weapon. Um, but it's, in my experience, it's not that great. Now cube of zoe that will allow us to start collecting items now we're going to want to start making our way through the castle 
and get to our first boss through the alchemy laboratory. Unfortunately, it is infested with skeletons. That's okay. A couple of quick swipes. We're getting body bagged by this bones here. That's not great, is it? You son of a... <sighs> That's fine. That's fine. We've got ourselves a hide caress, which we're going to actually equip. Because why not, I guess. We need all the armor we can get. Because at the moment, our defense is zero. And that's going to take us up to two. Which is better than nothing. Now, these red bones, they're kind of like dry bones from Mario. You can't permanently kill them. That sucked. Yeah, man. Oh, come on, man. Never in my life have I seen such bullshit. Now, I was going to get the first shield of the game as well. And the shield is actually reasonably useful. It will deflect most attacks. Problem is, I'm stupid and I quite often forget to use it. Oh, I see. There was a candelabra there, but it's disappeared. Curious. Nice, another level. Certainly going to enjoy that. There's another secret up there, but we cannot get to that yet either. Uh, now, that was our first sub-weapon, which consumes hearts to use. It's the knife. The knife is fine. It doesn't do a huge amount of damage, sadly, but we'll use it. We resist thunder. I don't use the potions that much. Maybe I should. Now, these little things... A little bit more annoying than you would think. But we're not going to worry about them too much. Now let's deal with these guys. Now eventually we will get some items that are going to let us know what all the enemies are called. And we can use this at some point to get up there. But currently we lack the ability to do so. That's fine. Now their weapons we can actually destroy. Which is handy. Let's keep going the only way we can. Now these things do drop tears on you. At least I assume they're tears and they're not just spitting on us. That would be kind of awkward if that was the case. Right, let's keep away from them. If we go through here we're going to get our first save room. Which, oh my, we want that. Now, I'm sure as we get some more powers, we're going to have to backtrack through the castle and collect items. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I might do that as like a compilation sort of video where I uh, overdub over it. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Uh, yeah, there's the axe. The axe isn't a terrible weapon. We can't go through there yet as we lack the ability to do so. Thus, the Castlevania. Naming. Or the Metroidvania, I should say, kind of uh, genre that this game has adapted over the years. So, let's go deal with our first boss, shall we? Evening, squires. How would you be finding yourselves? It's a rather unfortunate day for you. Because you have come up against Alucard. And Alucard's not messing around. These guys actually aren't too bad. Their attack pattern is somewhat predictable. However, when they get down to half-life, they do have a second phase, which can be troubling if you're not kind of sure what you're doing anyway. And we could be using our sub-weapon on these guys, but there's very little point, very little need to do so. And uh, if I could stop jumping into him, that would be rather good. Oh, he's on his second phase. <laughs> the enemy design in this game is fantastic. Yeah, we need to be cautious of that guy. I want to duck and avoid his attacks. Right, let's try and get this guy. Now this guy's lost his weapon. He's very easy to defeat. This guy's going to start getting enraged. And he's going to drop down and just fire fireballs at us. But once he gets to his second phase, his fireballs get a little bit bigger. But apart from that, he's not that dangerous. Get out of here. And then we get our first max life up. Wonderbar. 
So that's the first demon slain. But don't worry, there's going to be plenty more. Now these zombies are amazing. I love the way they die. It's just very satisfying. I love the way they just turn into a fountain of blood and viscera. In fact, the pixel art in this game has actually aged wonderfully. But guys, that's going to end it for the first video. We're going to drop a save there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're uh, going to enjoy this. And I'll catch you in the next part.